Good day, fair friends. We have a new project in today, and uh, I'm going to show you this guitar because it's wonderful. And if you ever thought that guitars coming out of China weren't very good or weren't any good, have a look at this. A limited ESP budget, not budget brand, mid uh, budget to mid uh, level guitars. Even I would say, I mean, these are professional quality guitars. Look at this neck through, neck through design. Reverse head stock, Floyd Rose, okay, albeit not a proper German Floyd Rose, but it is the Korean special version. Uh, it has active EMG pickup, so I would imagine an 81 and an 85 in there. Lovely, I'd say probably a grade 2 flame maple top there, not the highest grade, uh, but not bad at all. A fantastic looking guitar. Um, and even though I just said, you know, don't knock Chinese guitars, and don't knock Chinese guitars, but this one has come in and it does need attention to the frets. There are at least eight high frets, so we're not going to get away with just tampering with a few frets and levering them off, as you could. If there's five or less frets, we could possibly do that, but I already have eight high frets already without the strings off. I've, 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 um, I've gone across with a fret rocker. And I've already got a high fret. So I've suggested to the owner that we go with a complete fret level on this. It means I'm going to remove the treble over strings, the locking knot, uh, the tuner, probably the tuners, all that gubbins. So it will be having a setup as well afterwards. I'll check all the electrics and the intonation and everything before I take the strings off. Um, I'm not going to charge him for Floyd Rose setup, which on its own I charge £25 to set up a Floyd Rose from scratch. Uh, I'm not going to charge him for that, I'm going to charge him basically just for the fret level uh, and, uh, and the setup. So we're going to look at round about, round about the £100 mark, uh, maybe a little bit more if I'm supplying the strings, um, probably 105 quid. I don't remember if there's strings in the case or not, I will go and look shortly. Lovely looking guitar. I won't say there's not a mark on it because there are some hairline scratches which I'm just noticing. Now I've got it up to the window in the light. Uh, but what I am going to do is I'm going to reposition my camera and we're going to go across with the fret rocker and I'm going to show you the frets or I'm going to explain how and why or, or I'm going to explain why we need to do a complete fret level. Before I do do that, I'll show you the fret rocker. It is a piece of metal, flat, aluminium. Each, it's got four sides, all different lengths, and there's a reason for that, and I'll explain that in a minute. These are ground absolutely flat, precision flat, laser cut, and ground flat. And what we do is we test three frets at a time. We lay the edge across three frets, and if we get a rock, we know the one in the middle is high. And we move it across the neck, doing three frets at a time, shortening the length as we get further up the neck. I think that is now being explained. You understand that. So I'm going to move the camera. Um, you will have to take my word for it that the neck is straight. I have a not straight edge, it goes, these go over the frets. I will place it on the fingerboard um, and ascertaining that the neck is straight. Once it is straight, I will go across with the fret rocker and we will see. Now, I've already gone, I've already put this on the neck. There is the tiniest, tiniest bit of um, relief in there. I would say about point between 0.1 and 0.15 of a millimeter. So that neck is a straight, you know, a not as straight as it can be, but straight enough to go across with this. And if I'm getting eight rocking frets with this, with only that amount of relief in there, we know we need to do a fret level. So I will show that in a moment. I'm going to move the camera. Um, so back in a second. And there we are, back again. And just to show that there's hardly any gap under this notched straight edge, I have a feeler gauge, which is 0 0.1 of a millimetre really really thin that is a tenth of a millimeter and I'm going to place it under fret 7 see and it's hitting the underside of this fret look at it oh, it's rocking showing we have a tenth of a millimeter gap there so that neck is straight enough to check for high frets and we're going to take fret rocker uh, you need to listen carefully because It's not super loud. Right, let's just go a little bit more that way. There you go. Now set. Fret rocker. Listen. Middle one is high. 
That's one. That's two. Three. Four. That's a high one. very high, six, seven, another one very high, eight, listen, we have eight high frets, we have four just from a 12 fret upwards, so the only way we're going to get these level is by skimming across the whole lot with a flat level beam, uh, once we have skimmed across them they are going to be flat on the top, we're going to put that crown back in, like so, round them back off, it'll be flat, we're going to round them back off and then we have to repolish the whole lot. There is about four hours work just in the fret levelling, well probably not four hours, uh, let's go around about three hours to do it right, we've got to get over neck, we've got to remove all the hardware, uh, remove the tremolo, remove the locking nut, um, get the pickups sunk in, get everything taped up so we don't damage the guitar body anywhere, uh, then we'll get it all set up on the jig We'll tape up all uh, the thing, all of the fingerboard, leaving just the frets exposed, so we don't damage the fingerboard or the paintwork. We'll then place it on the jig over here on the other table, um, and then we can set about getting a level, level, uh, level leveling off these frets using the beam. Um, we'll, like I say, we'll flatten them all off, then we'll recrown them. Uh, so yeah, good three four hours work in just that job on its own. Once that is done, we've got them all polished up. We can remove the tape, we can put the tremolo back on, set the tremolo up, check all the electrics, lock it up back on, strings on, get it set up like I say, and it can go and be shipped out. I think that is a, uh, I think you're getting a good rate, 100, 105 pound including strings, I think uh, you can't really complain at that, can you? You're going to get five hours, at least five hours work on this for that. So absolutely fantastic. So I shall come back um, with an update later on, so make sure you, you're tuned in. Right, I've just been informed by the owner that there are strings in the case. Um, I wasn't going to charge for strings anyway, so I will use strings that have been supplied with the guitar. Now, I've started on this, um, I've removed the locking nut and I've clamped the tremolo. And how I clamp a tremolo is I use an old fret rocker there on the top of a business card so it doesn't mark the body and I place that underneath the tremolo so we've got the tremolo sitting flush and straight like so and what I'll do then is I've tuned the guitar up into standard tuning and I'm going to check the intonation on this guitar before I even remove the strings and the reason I'm going to do that is I always do a pre-setup setup so to speak um, I assume the strings going on at the same gauge as the strings coming off so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the intonation on the bridge before I remove the old strings and then when it comes to putting the new strings on the intonation should already be set so like I say I'm going to set the intonation now then I'm going to remove these strings we'll stick them in the bin uh, we will be replacing the strings and um, everything being right it means the intonation is already set it means I haven't got to faff about later when I reset everything I will also be checking all of the electrics for crackle I've had this guitar plugged in this morning in tune it plays beautiful it sounds good um, I do believe I've just been online and checked what pickups these are and I, I do believe this is an 8181 set not an 80 not an 81 80, 85 81 or an 816 set it'd be an 81 normally an 81 in the bridge anyway and either a 60 or an 85 in the next so it'll be one of those two sets they're not my favorite active pickup but I don't really have a favorite active pickup I, I do in my one of my own guitars I do have Seymour Duncan Blackouts, which sound amazing, but I also like EMG, I like the 8160 set, I think they sound amazing, and I especially like ESP active pickups, which you, it's very hard to come across them, but if you do come across them, you normally get them very cheap, and they're amazing pickups. So, um, yeah, I like the sound of a guitar, it's a well-built guitar, but it needs a lot of fret work. So, I'm going to crack on with this, and like I said, I'm going to do the intonation, I'll remove the strings, and when I've got it all rigged up, ready, taped up, ready to level the frets, I will come back again and show you how we go about that.
I'm actually going to show where we are on the intonation on this guitar. So, start with the E string. See, we're sharp there. And there we go, that's in tune. And we're going to put the 12th fret. Perfect. A string. Sorry if you see my armpit. Now the fret of note is sharp, so we need to move the saddle away from the neck or towards the strap pin at the end of the body. Sharp there. D. Again, a tiny bit sharp, so we'll move the saddle away from the neck again there. G string. That's good. B. B is sharp again. E. E is good. So we've got two or three just to move sharpen up a bit. We're going to move when you know it's sharp on a 12th fret, we need to move the saddle this way towards the strap pin at the body end. If it's flat, we move it that way towards the neck. The way I remember it is if it's sharp, which is five letters, we move the saddle right, which is five letters. If the note on the 12th fret is flat, we move it, which is four letters, we move it left, uh, which also is four letters. That's the way I remember it. So I'm going to crack on with this, I'm going to get it done. And um, I'll show you how we got on later. Right then, boys and girls, we're at a slightly different angle again. I'm going to try and not get in the way. But this is, I'm, I've, I've got the camera set up here because I'm going to show you now. Now I've got the um, truss rod set right. I've got the neck absolutely straight. I'm going to show you the difference between that. I, I'm, I got eight frets rocking. Uh, but the reason we shouldn't give someone like me, a guitar tech or a luthier, should not give a price for a job unless they know it's going to be that price. Because, for instance, I've now. We had a bit of relief in the neck before. I've now set the neck absolutely straight. That not straight edge is right, it's virtually, bar a couple of areas here, by a hair, it is not touching the fretboard. And I can just give that a 30 tooth of a turn just to get that absolutely straight. And that neck is absolutely straight there. And what I do then is, once that's done, I go across with a fret rocker again. Now, I kid you not, now I've gone across with a fret rocker again. There are 13 frets out of whack. It means this whole, all of these frets, the whole lot need, we need to level the whole lot. One is I'm going to show you, once I've got the neck straight and the strings off, I can, I can actually check the neck properly. And I'm going to go across the 13 frets and I'm going to show you again where you are. And if I really wanted to, I could stick a light behind this and you'd see there's no gaps onto this fingerboard. But I think you can see there. Uh, that is, that's a hundredth of a millimetre gap, probably in a couple of areas here. Now, you never get a neck absolutely, I mean absolutely 100% straight. Anyway, that's as close to straight as we are possibly going to get. I'm going to go across with a fret rocker. I'm going to go across in all three areas, which would be the outside, the middle, the inside, to me. And, that is, and I guarantee there are 13 frets out of whack here. And here we go. That's really high. One. Next one's all right. This one. Two. Next fret along. Three. And on this end, three. This one, next one along. Four. Next few are okay. Not going to do the outsides because I know these are okay. Next one here. That's five. This one will make six. This one will make seven. This one, eight. I just had to pause here because I've just taken delivery of a printer. So I'm going to move on again. This one was number eight. We'll go here. Nine. This one, ten. And at that end, 10. This one will be 11. This one will be 12. 
and this one 13. So you see these frets are uneven all over in different areas and some of them are more than one place on the fret, some on the, both outside, some just in the middle. So we have 13 frets um, in 15 different areas, some of them need obviously adjusting too. So the best way to do this is we'll get everything taped up and we'll go with it one completely level beam with sandpaper on there and we'll skim across the whole lot backwards and forwards until we've got them all levelled. As mentioned before, once they're all levelled, they're going to be flat and we're going to go and put a crown in them again and once that's done we're going to polish them all up again using five grits of sandpaper ranging from 800 grit right up to 2000 grit maybe even 2500 grit um, it could be just then to just be get it all set up again get some strings on and uh, let it go so all in all I would say it's about five hours work on this um, I've given the owner the price has agreed to the price uh, so without further ado, I'm going to crack on. Just to show I didn't cheat when I stopped the camera there, when the delivery came, I'm going to put this back on. I wouldn't cheat anyway. But there you go. That's the neck as straight as we're going to get it. I am going to crack on. Right, here we are back with the guitar on the neck jig, all strapped up, dials zeroed out. The neck's going absolutely nowhere. If this neck moves, these dials will tell me. They zeroed out, or they were, close enough. Um, like I say, if this neck moves, uh, this jig, will or these dials will tell me. So there we go. So what I'm going to do is, I'm not filming this. I've got so much to do. I ain't got time to make videos on everything. I've got a milled flat steel bar. Well, is it steel? Yeah, it is steel. We've got 240 grit on one side. 400 grit on the other, we're going to go across all of the frets, we're going to level the lot. Before I do that, the ones that are excessively high, I'm going to remove the top with a flat file first. Then I'm going to go across and we're going to get them all arced properly. I can just zoom you in just to give you a quick look before uh, I proceed with the work. So, dials are zero that. Neck, it might not be exactly level from your angle, but that is because of the camera, don't worry about that. We're going across with the leveling beam, we'll be removing material till we level all the way across all of the frets. Um, then we can move on to recrowning and polishing. I'll be back with another update shortly. Well, welcome back. I'm just about finished leveling the frets. I've been over with the 240 grit, just about to finish off with the 400 grit, which is a lot smoother. I've just gone across the top again in pen, um, and once this pen's removed, we know we've got all the frets level with each other. Shouldn't take too long. It means we've got all the frets level with each other. I can now move on to recrowning and polishing. Probably not going to film all that. I've done thousands of videos showing how to recrown, how to polish. So I'm just going to crack on with the work and get it done. Welcome back, and we've moved on somewhat. Um, we now have the guitar back on the original setup bench. I've leveled the frets. Not only have I leveled the frets, I've also uh, where they were flat after we'd leveled them, I put the crown back in each fret individually using my three edge file, ground flat edges. Uh, the way I do that is, I've explained this many times before, we come across and as we come across and file, we lean over, we lean over, we lean over, we lean over. Both sides are there, 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 like so, until we get that crown back in there. Once that's done, always check in with the fret rocker to make sure that we are level everywhere. And I will finish off with a curved file, or what we call a, a crowning file. And I have two sides to this. It's got a 2mm side and a 25 mil side. Brown measure it at 25 mil, 3 mil. And I go across and I'll just finish off, remove any burrs with this file. Just going across every single file and I round off the edges at the edge and this edge. I go from that side, then I go around and I go from this side, blah, blah, blah. And it's what we do. 
So now we have that lovely curve back on the top of each fret. If you're looking at a fret that way on, if you look at it this way on, where it was flat, we now put that curve in there. We've got that curve back by using the file that way. So I'm sure you understand what I mean there. So now what we do is, before we move on to the final stage, which is the polishing of the frets, which I'll explain in a minute, we go across with the fret rocker, making sure everything is absolutely level. And under three areas, furthest away, closest, centre, just to make sure we've got no rock anywhere. And I guarantee we have no rock anywhere because I've already been across this and the neck is absolutely straight. I've already been up and down this neck making sure. So now I think you can uh, agree that all of the frets along the length of this neck are level with each other. It means we have a uniform amount of levelness across the whole length of the neck. Those frets are level. So all that remains to be done now, like I mentioned, is we need to polish these back up because we put scratch marks in with the files. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go with five or six different grades of sandpaper, starting at 800 grit, moving through 1000, 1200, 1500, 2000. I might even do the final polish with 2500, depending on how they come out. Normally I've found even going up to 1500 grit is enough, but I like to go that one step further. Once that is done, we've removed, we've removed all the scratches and got a high polish, we'll finish off with the finest possible grade of steel wool in existence, which is the 0000 grade. And there you can see, with no rock anywhere. Now you couldn't hear if there's any rock because I was yabbing all the way across it. But take my word for it, these frets are all level, so now I'm going to move on to the polishing. If I don't get to show you any polishing, uh, polishing on this video, I'll explain as I just did with the uh, different grits of paper. We'll go with five or six different grits of paper, starting at 800, finishing at the most 2500, which is an ultra fine grit. We'll bring these back to a lovely shine, get all the scratches out, and I'll finish off with steel wool. Once that's done, we'll remove all the tape. Uh, we'll get some uh, mineral oil into the wood, this being a rosewood fingerboard, just to clean it up, um, give it a nice new shine to treat the wood. Uh, you should do this once a year. This is not lemon oil, as it's called, it actually is mineral oil with a little bit of lemon in there. If you use lemon oil, it will rip your wood to pieces. Specially formulated by guys that know what they're doing for rosewood and ebony fingerboards. It will clean your fingerboard and it will, um, well, it's not lubricate, but it will, it basically, it will treat your wood and get a little bit of moisture in there. Should do this once or twice a year, I recommend at least once a year. Good stuff, I've got the spray on bottle here, which is fantastic. Let it soak in, it can wring all the grime out, wipe it off then just give it a final buff in. So that will treat the neck. Once that's done, we'll get the strings back on, we'll set up the tremolo, and when we've got the nut on, of course, um, we'll get it all set up, we'll reset the truss rod, and this guitar will play like an absolute dream. I've, I thought I'd just explain that, just in case I don't come back until we've got it all done, because I'm very pushed for time at the moment, and the less time I am, uh, I spend making videos, the more time I've got to work. So, catch you later. And here we are boys and girls, down at, we're now at the business end of the job on this uh, limited um, super strap. Like I say, all the frets are levelled. Uh, I'm now going to do final polishing of the frets. Uh, we have six different grades of uh, sandpaper there, ranging from starting at 800 up to 1000, 1200, 1500, 2000 and 2500 grits. The 800, I am going to just round over the edges or the beveled edges of the frets just to soften them up a little. Uh, we're just going to go down the side basically just to take any burrs uh, we have on there. Nice and gentle, we don't have to go mental, um, but we will just come across like this. And then I will do my first polish with this paper. All we're doing is any burrs we've created by levelling these frets, um, we're going to remove from the end. Don't have to go mental, just nice and gentle. We'll do this with all the grits. And that's it, that's what I'm going to do for now. Round over these edges. Once it's done, we're going to go. Up, we're going to polish right over the fret. I'm going to get right into the corners at the side there. Uh, 
And again, round over these edges. Like I say, we're going to do this with six different grits. We're going to do all the frets six times. Once that's done, we're going to finish off with the finest grade steel wool. Get them all polished up nice. Once that's done, we're ready. We'll remove the tape. We'll spray the fingerboard, get it all oiled up. We'll get some strings on there, get the nuts on there, get some strings on there, get it set up and get it out the door. Job done. I'm not going to film all of this. You've all seen this plenty of times before. Um, but I'm going to crack on because it's a long-winded process this, it makes your fingers ache. Um, so we'll have a couple of breaks in between, I'll move on to another bench on another guitar. Once I get a little bit tired of this, maybe after an hour, I'll move on to something else and I'll come back onto this, but it will be done today. So um, make sure you tune back in later and uh, we'll have it all done. And there we are, the frets all done. Six grades of um, sandpaper I've used so far, I've not yet gone across with a wire wall, I'm just about to get some out now. Uh, this steel wool I buy is the extra fine grade. Um, I will show you in a minute, I'm just cutting a piece off. It's the finest you can get. I'll show you there, extra fine grade. Zero, 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 right there. It's extra fine, finest steel wool you can get. This will bring these frets up to an absolutely wonderful shine. I'm going to rip this piece in half. Uh, I doubt you'll get it on camera until I've got the tape removed. But this, they're looking a bit shiny, but they're dull at the moment. But this will remove all of that dullness. Absolutely beautiful. That's it. So, 23 more or so to do. I don't know if it's a 24 fret, I didn't count. So, I'm going to crack on with this. Once it's done, I'll come back and show you what they're like um, once I've got the tape off. Here we are with the frets all finished and polished up. You see I removed all the tape on the guitar. There's the frets. If you want to zoom in, have a quick look at them. Highly polished, all levelled, recrowned, polished and ready to go. Uh, I've also removed all the tape from the guitar. Uh, it's low tack tape but it can leave a residue. So what I do is I always clean the guitar when I remove the tape. Always being very careful to remove the tape because I've had instances where you've got an older guitar with old paint. This is the stuff, it's 3M. I always use this. And it can remove any loose flakes, it will pull them off. I've had it happen on some vintage guitars before. Um, you know, the well, first time I did it, I had a, uh, I, my heart stopped beating for a second there um, because I thought I'd damage the guitar. And I, I talk, told the owner about it, he says, Listen, it's a guitar. Uh, they get nicks, they get dings, they get dongs, or whatever he says. Absolutely fine, no problem. But you'll always watch out for that when you've got an older guitar with flaky paint somewhere. You may not even see it flaking. You pull the tape off and it'll rip a big chunk of paint out. I've had it happen a couple of times on, on uh, older guitars. So always bear that in mind before taping up the guitar. Um, how I remove any residue it leaves. Normally you would use naphtha, but we don't get naphtha ever in England. So what we use is we use Zippo lighter fluid, which is the same stuff. Good thing about this, it cleans, it removes any gunk and anything left on there evaporates. Once it's done, always put it on with a lint-free cloth, blah, 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 and wipe off. Once it's, if there's any residue left there, uh, it's not evaporated, chamois leather. I always finish off with some chamois leather, some chamois, as you do, uh, just to remove anything that's been left. Normally you don't get anything, so all that remains for me to do now with this guitar is to get the nuts on there, get some strings on it. Set up the Floyd Rose. I'm not setting up Floyd. I'm not video and setting, setting up the Floyd Rose. I've done many, a couple of videos on that. You don't need to see that. If you need to see that, go and check my account on YouTube. Uh, check my back catalogue, and I'll do. A, I've got a thing on there showing you how to set up a Floyd Rose. Uh, the intonation is just about bang on anyway, so I'll get that done. I'm not charging for the Floyd Rose setup because uh, there's quite a lot of work done. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to crack on because I want to get this one out of the way. The guitar is all finished. Job done. Came in, um, it wasn't playing very well at all. Uh, it was quite obvious to me that some of the frets needed attention, and so we ended up giving a complete or doing a complete fret level. Um, I have just finished that. Well, obviously, I finished that yesterday. I've just set up the tremolo, it's floating nice and even level there. If anything, it's leaning back just a little, but that is no problem at all. So that's floating really nice. Uh, the guitar is in tune, I've stretched the strings out, the guitar, I've not plugged it in, I already plugged it in before I uh, played it, I've just had to reset the intonation because a couple of um, strings were out, I've had to adjust the bottom of one of these saddles here just to file a little bit off to make it fit further this way, 
the guitar is absolutely fine. I'll check the tuning again in a minute. Um, and I will plug it in and have a little go, but that is another project finished. So lovely guitar, made in China. It is an ESP Limited M300 FM. The FM I would imagine stands for Flame Maple, which is the top. Uh, we have a set of 8181 pickups in there. There's a 9 volt battery in there for those pickups. So active pickups, very nice guitar, beautiful inlays. And it now has level frets. So, that's it, another project finished. Um, I will let the owner know that this is ready to pick up. He can come and collect it and we can wave goodbye to it. So, as always, be good to each other and I'll see you in the next one.